Hello everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Uh, today, I wanna talk about smokeless cleansing techniques to cleanse an area, a room, a space, what have you. So you might notice that the room that I'm in is very bare right now. There's nothing on the wall behind me. I have, you know, my little my little bookshelf right here that has some altar stuff on it. But other than that, the wall is white and bare. And there's a reason for that. So we had a roommate and they occupied this room. That roommate has since moved out. They have moved on to bigger and better things for themselves. So happy, bittersweet moment for us here. But that left us with their empty room, basically. And so now I have the privilege of being able to change this room and create a sort of recording studio for YouTube, the podcast, and for audiobooks that I record, but also a space for my worship and my witchcraft practices and probably the occasional yoga and exercise or whatever else I decide to do in here. First, though... The room needs to be cleansed, and I don't want to decide exactly what to do with the space and how I want to decorate it until I cleanse the space and really get a feel for the energy that I want to create in this room. So for now, it's kind of bare. Uh, you'll probably, over the course of the next several videos or so, depending on how long it takes me to get my shit together, uh, see different decorations and maybe me trying out different areas to record in in this room but first I need to cleanse the space now there are a few different reasons why you might want to go with a smokeless cleansing technique and I'm gonna talk about a few of them obviously so in my house we have people that have allergies. There are people in the house who have reactive airway issues and certain smokes and even herbs and fragrances and stuff can trigger uh, respiratory issues. And then we also have several animals. I have a dog, a cat, two ferrets, and a snake. So sometimes smoke isn't a good cleansing technique to use depending on the room that I'm in because if those animals are in that room, I definitely don't wanna be using smoke or any sort of heavy fragrance in that space because you know, I don't wanna give them any respiratory issues or trigger their fight or flight response with the smoke because that can also happen. There may also be rules in whatever space you live in against using smoke and burning different objects and herbs and even candles sometimes. So it's a good idea to have these smokeless cleansing techniques as a backup or even as your first go-to method if you can't use smoke and fire or open flames in your space. So I'm going to go over three general smokeless cleansing techniques. They all have different sort of subcategories and things that can be used within them, but the first one is sound. Cleansing a space with sound is one of the easiest things that you can do. It requires nothing except for yourself. Of course, you can add in different things if you feel like adding them or you that sounded funny. You can use different methods of creating sound, but the easiest method is clapping or even screaming if you have that option. So for me in my practice, if I'm going to cleanse a space using sound, my first go-to is clapping. I like to clap really loud in every corner of the room and then in the middle of the room. It just helps to kind of loosen up anything that is stuck in those nooks and crannies of the space. You can also use this to loosen up any energy that is stuck in the closet or maybe you have smaller spaces like bookshelves and you can clap in those areas too. The vibration from that clapping and that movement through the air and the sound helps to loosen up that energy so that it makes it easier to get rid of it. First, I need to mention though, I can't believe I forgot this. Um, if you are new to cleansing a space, you wanna make sure that you open the window or the door if you don't have a window, but open the entryway to the room so that the energy that you're trying to get out 
has a way to leave. So if you're going to be cleansing your whole house, I recommend starting from the top to the bottom if it's more than one story. Otherwise, start from the back to the front and really push that energy sort of out the front door. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. I guess I really need to do a video on cleansing techniques in general and how to cleanse and different methods. One day. So with cleansing a space with sound, you can add different elements of sound to this in order to make it more effective. If you did the clapping in the corners, then you can turn around and start from the door or the corner of the room, whichever one is on the opposite end of the exit to the room. So for me, for example, in this room, the door to enter is right over here and there is a window right over there. So I would, if I'm only doing this room, I would close this door open that window and I would start clapping from the door and walking toward the window, if that makes sense. I'll try to get like a video of me actually doing it and put it right here somewhere. You can also use different musical instruments like bells or the little triangles that, you know, ding, 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 dinner's ready, um, <laughs> those things. And uh, I have even used my flute and played songs to cleanse a space or just played one solid note that I really felt vibrated really well in the room and loosened things up and pushed things out the exit. If you don't have a musical instrument and you don't have a bell, bang on some pots and pans. Get, get a pan and a spoon and just bang on it to put those vibrations out into the room and get rid of that energy. And lastly, for sound, you can also use your favorite music. Use a music that makes you feel good, that makes you, I don't know, gives you the emotion that you want to have in the room and make it to where that music is the only thing that can take up space in that room. For me, I would couple this with a song that has a lot of bass because again, the vibrations, and that's really how I work with cleansing with sound is through those vibrations, and go from back to front or from entrance to exit as you play that song. And I feel like it's really important when working with sound to cleanse a space that you do go from back to front or from entrance to exit. Um, in my case, you know, door to window, because you fill the space that you take up with that sound and you're effectively cornering the energy and the stuff that you don't want in the room and giving it one option and that option is to leave. If you go from this corner to this corner and back and forth, you know, you're just chasing the energy around and not really forcing it out of your space. I think it's very important to move from one side to the other and push it in the direction that you want it to go. The next method is using a room spray. I know a lot of people in a lot of stores sell these room sprays that cleanse. They usually are labeled as a smudging spray. But smudging aside, you can use room sprays to cleanse a space. A room spray is essentially a charged spray, um, usually made with alcohol, water, and some type of herb or essential oil. And it works in the same way that smoke cleansing would. You spray it around your room, starting from top to bottom, and as it goes down, it really captures and dissipates or uh, transforms the energy that has been left in that room into a neutral energy and really helps to dissipate and clear the area. Now you can make a room spray on your own if you choose to do so. The method is very simple, but it's going to depend on the ingredients that you are using. So if you're going to use essential oils, you want to have an emulsifier. So this is going to be some type of alcohol. I know in a previous video I mentioned using witch hazel, but I have since learned that witch hazel is not an effective emulsifier for essential oils. So don't use witch hazel, use some form of alcohol. Please do your research for that because I'm not an expert, obviously, you know, I made a mistake in a previous video. Don't use witch hazel. Some essential oils can't be emulsified and mixed together like that, and they should be used sparingly, especially if you have pets. 
Uh, so again, do your research and make sure that what you're using is safe. If you're going to use herbs, I definitely recommend using a dry herb instead of a fresh one, unless you have some sort of preservative that you can add to your spray to keep it from molding and going rancid. I have used vitamin E oil for that. It's not technically a preservative, it is an antioxidant, um, but I have read that it can do the same thing and help keep things, um, basically it helps keep their, their shelf life stable for longer. If you want to make your own room spray, I definitely recommend giving it a go. You can find a lot of different room spray recipes online if you just Google cleansing room spray. For ethical reasons, I cannot recommend that you use white sage. I've talked about white sage before and how its use can be problematic in the witchcraft and occult community. Use an herb that you correspond with cleansing, juniper, rosemary, whatever else you correspond with cleansing, those are normally my go-to herbs. And give it a try. Room sprays are great for cleansing a space and they're a good alternative if you still want that fragrance without having the smoke. Again, just be mindful of other people or creatures in your home. Some essential oils and fragrances are harmful to different animals and we don't want to harm our furry or scaly friends just for the sake of cleansing a space when there are other options available to us. Now the last one I want to mention here is by far the easiest and the, the most mundane. Clean your house. <laughs> or clean your room or clean your space or clean whatever it is. Too often I see people jumping to the conclusion of I need to cleanse the space, let's get out my herb bundles and my room sprays and my incense when they neglect the fact that maybe their desk is super cluttered or they have dishes and junk mail scattered all over their kitchen and they haven't swept or mopped in months. You can combine the witchcraft and the magic with the mundane action of actually clean cleaning your space. I find this to be especially true for me. Uh, I do most of the cooking in my home and the kitchen really holds a lot of energy so if I go downstairs into my kitchen and the kitchen is a mess I cannot cook anything without cleaning the kitchen first when I wake up in the morning and I'm getting up and I'm getting ready and I get ready to tidy up my house the kitchen is the first thing that I clean it's one of the places that I spend the most time it's one of the places that other people spend a lot of time in my house and it's one of the places that when people come home from work, that's, they pass right through that space or they hang out there first. So a lot of energy and emotion sort of hangs out there. And it's really important for me to get rid of it. So I can combine the act of wiping down the cabinets and the countertops with cleaning away anything that has been left there unbeknownst to other people. There are floor washes and window washes and door washes that are created for the specific purpose of cleansing spaces. It's definitely okay to do these in the same vein as mopping your floor. I think it's really important that we can effectively combine these two different processes. Clean your house, but cleanse it too. The only thing that I would say about doing floor washes and using powders and whatnot on your floors, besides making sure that it is safe for whatever you're cleaning, is that when you dispose of it, dispose of it either directly down the drain if you are using a liquid outside, away from the home, or like throw it out the front door. Um, the same thing for if you're sweeping or vacuuming. Either dump it into your trash can and immediately take the trash out, sweep it out the front door, whatever it is, make sure that you get it out. Don't just let it hang around in your house in the trash can because then you know it's still there. And over time, depending on how long you let it sit, that energy can can come back out. And you know, it's sort of like when you dump something that smells really gross in a trash can. You dump it in there and you close the lid and you forget about it. 
until you open the trash can back up and suddenly the entire room smells like crap because you didn't take the trash out when you dumped something gross in it. The same process applies. And I feel like the act of cleaning your space doesn't get enough attention when we talk about cleansing our homes. Energy has... Energy is a thing of opportunity. If there are nooks and crannies and spaces that it can get into, it will. It's sort of like uh, like smoke. You know, if you, if you leave it in an area so long, it will dissipate and go everywhere. And then you can't see it anymore. This is also really important for the next step in cleansing a space is that once you have everything gone and clear and there is no more whatever energy was left there, um, it's now a neutral space, you have to fill it with something. Because as several other people in the community have said, including J. Allen Cross and Firelight in their books that I just read recently, nature does not like a vacuum. If you take something out of a space, other things will find a way to fill it. So you can either leave it neutral and let things just go about their natural course and see what shows up in your space, or you can turn around and fill that space with the energy that you want. And you can do this in many different ways. I like to play nice music or light a nice smelling candle. It just depends. But I will talk about all of that in another video where I talk about actually cleansing and how it works and different methods that you can go about doing it other than smokeless cleansing techniques. How do I want to describe that? The process. The process of cleansing your space. I will do a video on the process of cleansing your space and what to do afterwards. Oh, I'm losing my mind. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted to touch on smokeless cleansing techniques because not everybody can use smoke, burn herbs and incense, and I feel like there are some things that don't get talked about enough, like actually cleaning your house. That is transformative on its own. So I guess I will see you next time. Bye for now. A big shout out to all of my patrons for making this channel possible and helping me continue to sustain the things that I do. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron for as little as a dollar a month and get patron exclusive perks and content. If you're looking to be part of a witchcraft community that is safe and inclusive, Feel free to join me over on Discord for our growing community there, or if Facebook is more your thing, I have a Facebook group, and all of those links are going to be in the description below.